Andy Spade, co-founder of Kate Spade and Jack Spade, a full collection of high-end women's and men's products, from apparel to shoes to accessories, and sold in the finest stores across the country. Andy, along those lines, you were in the corporate world for a while. You were actually a, a big advertising guy. How did you get there? I mean, Kate Spade, uh, Jack Spade, huge company, huge brand now. How did you get the gumption to just say, I'm doing it, man. I'm just going for it. I think my wife and I, Kate, at the time we weren't married, but she was working as an editor in fashion. And she was tired of, of kind of carrying bags around and, and running on, on trips, which were wonderful trips, by the way, I have to say. I didn't understand why she was upset, but she was carrying the suitcases. And actually what happened was one of her employers actually treated her assistant poorly. And she didn't like the way that uh, the people were being treated in, in the magazine at that time. And she came home and she quit that day. And she was upset. And I said, let's start a company. She was working as an accessories editor. So she would go around the country and around the world and find the best bags and jewelry and shoes to present in the magazine. She said, there's nothing between the European bags like the Pradas and, and Gucci's that are kind of have hardware and they're a little bit pretentious and fashionable, real fashionista, and things I love like L.L. Bean and the things I find. She said, I want a simple tote that's stylish, not dumb, but just has a really simple practical side to it. And I said, we can do it. She said, I've never designed. And she said, well, we can't do it. I said, we're not starting a company. We're just making a bag. Let's just make a bag. That's a, that's a great point. About you that. always start one at a time. There's no, this is an empire this guy has. The important thing, it's a great lesson. Everybody I've had on this show, Jim Cook, Boston Beer, $300 million, 1-800-Flowers, $800 million. It starts with one. You made a bag. Yeah. Yeah. You made a bag. Andy, anytime anybody, you just didn't believe in it and it wasn't going to happen? We always believed in the idea, Donnie. What happened after two to three years, I was freelancing and moonlighting as, a, as an advertising copywriter. Kate was exhausted. We were working out of our apartment. There was a trail from the bathroom, actually, to the bed, to the door. We were sleeping on friends' couches. We weren't yet making a profit. I was, I was helping buy fabric. We were exhausted. We, told, we brought in two partners, and we told them, we can't do it anymore. We're leaving. Um, our partners came back and said, look, we just joined, and um, you can't leave. And the company's <laughs> on its way, and we're about to take off. It, it was working too well, and we were exhausted. It was nights and days, and, you know, obviously you're on top of each other. Yeah. And that wasn't a doubt. That was actually, I don't think I can get through this. And then we made it through our partners we brought in, helped out and covered for us during that time, and we made it through that moment. Okay, guess what? It's never going to be easy, but it is fun. Okay, when we come back. I think there are a lot of, a, a lot, I mean, you look around and you think about when we started, we only had a handbag business, and we had six shapes in the beginning. We started thinking about what are other opportunities and thought about, kind of the aesthetic that we were bringing to it, the design qualities that we brought to it. And we, we looked at ourselves and said, what is our core competency? As Don, Donnie said, what's our passion? What do we love? Kate said, I love shoes. It's an obvious extension. It's been done before. And we looked at paper because Kate loves stationery, and part of the brand identity was about her and about what she loved personally, even though you don't naturally go from handbags to paper <laughs> and stationery. We did because it was true to her, and you can't make a promise without loving it and living it. As Donnie said, every day you live there, you have to believe in what you do, because people will poke holes in it, and it won't come out the way you want it. If your idea is big enough, as Stephanie said earlier, she can probably go into four or five different categories, home and other things, based on what Scoop has brought to the market and the way in which she's done it. Here's another way to look at it. I don't care what the product is. Is. There's always a better way. Andy, catch this, okay? What do I, what's that? All right, 25 years ago, water. Nobody was making money off of it. Somebody figured out a way. Let's put a label on it. Let's do some advertising. Let's take it away for free. We'll charge a buck and a half for it. Right. So I don't care. There's, Andy, I want to stop there. How did you know, you now you and Kate, right. Kate Space sitting at the table, you how did you know there were going to be customers out there for that? Well, we looked at ourselves, honestly, and our friends, and, and, that. and that's how we that. do it. And Katie said, I wear this. I don't want those European bags. They're too fashionable actually for her she didn't want anything that said too much about her and then she said the other things are tote bags by ll bean but there's nothing that's sporty but also has an element of fashion and style to it she said there has to be more people like me out there and she looked at other companies she looked at companies like lacoste and she said that's kind of where i want to be there's nothing like that in bags so that was a way to Steph, find how did you know okay Six words that drive you crazy. Why didn't I think of that? Those ideas that are so simple. They're making people millions. They're trying to get you going tonight. Now we open up the questions to the audience. Before we do, Andy, i got a question for you. You're asked it a lot. I'm asked it a lot. When do you know when to take on a partner or not or to go it alone? What's that formula? I think that's a really, really tough question. When we started our business, my wife and I founded the business. I continued to work in advertising and do freelance writing. 
and that was what was paying the bills. We were afraid and also didn't have any background in startup, startup businesses, so we couldn't go to a bank at the time. Um, we realized that we needed help, physical help. We didn't need money. We were okay. I took my 401k out, as did my wife. I was working on the side, but we needed help. So we did deals with friends of ours who we could trust. One was an expert in production. One happened to be an expert in sales, and we were kind of a portfolio of people, and we could grow it to, we know, the next level by using those people. They helped ship, as we all know when we start. Yeah. They were, they were people we knew who weren't afraid to roll up their sleeves and go out and like serve coffee to customers that came <laughs> in. And we all did. Then we divided and conquered. But I don't think you give up a partnership unless you know the person's going to be a big contributor to it. But had we not done that, we would have gotten the Along next those lines, level. I had one other thing, too. My dad taught me this. Always keep 51%. Never give yeah. up more because then it ain't yours anymore. Okay, we got life. Andy? I would say that you really have to love it. No one projects out how long it takes to build a business, and it becomes your life. So strategize your life. Know what you want to do in your life and make sure that your business idea actually mirrors and matches that because you're going to be out five years and you're going to be doing this a lot. Make sure it's something you like.